from a user perspective, you would always say, yeah, I want everything now. Bitcoin derives its strength from not being changed easily. And the market will tell us what is working, what users want. Will you start off um, directly self-custodial? I think for most people, that's just not realistic. So you just have one QR code and the user um, doesn't necessarily need to know whether they are paying with on-chain or Lightning. If all of the people <laughs> would discover Bitcoin uh, at once, uh, we would certainly have a problem. I don't want Bitcoin to grow too fast. That would mean the fiat system completely wrecks. Your neighbors, all your family, all your loved ones are in big trouble. So it's something that you don't wish for the world. Most people are interested in fiat gains initially. That's also why shitcoins work. We should try to make it one big system and not tear them apart in some custodial KYC kind of Bitcoin and, and then it's the, the self-custodial Bitcoin. Uh, do you do this um, as your main business or yes, is that just... Uh, yeah. I, I do only, only podcasting now. Nice, nice. It, it, it's fascinating. Yeah, I was like starting... I, I, I'm not even like one year in the podcasting. Mm-hmm. And I started this as just like a side project of just like, oh, yeah, let's, let's talk with some Bitcoiners. I mean, I already talked with Bitcoiners, but never recorded it. And I was like, I mm -hmm. can record that and just put it up. Then I have a podcast. And then someone approached me from, uh, from a company and said like, Hey, we want to sponsor you. And I was like, wait, and like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that as a job. Like, it's just like a, a side thing. And, yeah. but they're like, yeah, we, we want to do work with together with you. And I'm like, okay, let's, okay. There's money in, uh, and then, <laughs> then I just like, okay, if, if there's money in, then, then let's, let's, let's just do it full time. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. And nice. now I'm actually on the, in, at the same level than I was before with, with earning. Like I, I reached that level kind of like in the last one, two months. Wow. Uh, and it was a big moment for me. It was like, oh shit. Like I, I didn't even start it like a, f yeah. a, a year ago. And, and now I'm already there where I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, it, it was fascinating and that in a not exciting uh time like bitcoin is not ribbing yeah. like uh two x yeah, or something yeah. like that okay. it's a good time yeah. but not like a crazy bull run or something like that that's interesting i would also have quite some questions for you then maybe <laughs> about <laughs> yeah, yeah, the we... podcasting because um with albi we also have quite some podcasters we support this podcasting 2.0 um movement um you can receive boostergrams and stuff um, Wait, what is podcasting two point zero? Oh, you you never heard about that? You know, like the boosts and uh, the the streaming payments and these kinds oh, of so, things. So, so value for value, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do you use that with your podcast? I didn't uh, really check. Sorry. Uh, I uh, have my podcast on Fountain. That's, yep. that's okay. where I get streams and boosts. Nice. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I also post, uh, the links on primal. So like on Nostra and mm -hmm. uh, fountain is connected with my Nostra anyways. Cool. So that's my only where I do value for value on Bitcoin. There's another value for value on YouTube where I have channel members because YouTube offers that. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's enable that. It's just like a click of a button. And there are some people that give me money. I would love love for that to be Bitcoin because I have to give 50% yeah. of that to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but, but without yeah. YouTube, I wouldn't have it uh, anyways. So yeah. uh, there, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of things that come up peer to peer. So like mm -hmm. value for value. But honestly, 95% of the money is coming from ad revenue, YouTube okay. and Twitter. Uh, and sponsor payments like that's okay. ninety five percent of the the things. Oh, that's uh, here and there, there's like a big payment from a supporter who mm -hmm. says like, "Here's some Bitcoin. Uh, I really love your show, and I want to support that." That's rare, but there is something like there are some OGs that just like anonymously give yeah. you a lot of money, yeah. not a lot of money, like, like a few hundred euros maybe, but yeah. like uh, that that's that stands out to me, uh, and. Funny enough, those are usually those people that don't even present themselves. They just like really just yeah. want to give without even me having the possibilities to, to give them back or <laughs> credit them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. That's quite interesting about the Bitcoin community. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, but interesting that you say it's like um, still 
um, 95% ad revenue and yeah, basically businesses paying. Um, so we have quite some way to go there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a hard sell for someone to, uh, pay for something they can have for free. Like, how do you, uh, do you, do you have, like with Albi, you have uh, way more data than me because I only have my own yeah. data. Uh, how do you see that? Like how, how likely are people to do that? And, and what, what do you, do you see at Albi? Mm, yeah. I mean, I guess it's still a bit small to build your business, um, completely on value for value. But if you, if you think about the future and maybe, I don't know, 10 years in or something, and a lot more people are exposed to Bitcoin possibly and use that in their everyday wallets or whatever, um, I, I can see a future where that, um, where that works out. Um, currently, like I said, also for us, it's, it's way too small to sustain, uh, yeah, business basically. Um, and we see similar patterns. So there are, um, a, a few ones that, um, just think the products are awesome and want to give back and they donate a bit more. There are a lot of, uh, people out there just don donating small amounts. Um, yeah. Guess it's, maybe, maybe I should yeah. try it. Uh, I think uh, Tomic came up to me at Bitcoin Amsterdam mm -hmm. and said to me, "Hey, just put like a, a Albi link in your description, and then all the Albi users get automatically a pop up when they see my podcast, so they can uh, yeah. support something like that." Is that is that true? Um, on YouTube, so with the extension, we support um, some websites. <clears throat> so, for instance, if you are on Twitter. Um, on Medium, on GitHub, there are like more popular sites that we support where you can just add it to your description, like you say, or you to your profile on GitHub. Um, and the Albi extension will pick up your Lightning address. And if you then click on the extension icon, um, which turns green, uh, if we find such info on this particular page, um, users can just click on it and um, send. Uh, value back by just clicking two buttons basically so it's more of a, a streamlined process but it's but also on, on on youtube also on youtube yeah yeah it's it's a bit hard honestly um to keep up because every time youtube changes something or twitter changes something within their website uh, you might need to update the extension to <laughs> Um, to have the latest um, DOM structure that we can parse to get this info uh, from. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit of a, a hack, but <laughs> some people seem to use it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I actually, um, my fear job before was IT security. Okay. And we had a tool where we actually scanned websites and we worked for big companies. Um, uh, like they have uh, hundreds of thousands, sometimes even like tens of thousands of, of, of domains and, and websites going um, with all the subdomains, of course. Uh, so the, we, we scanned all those. And so we, we know when like they wanted to find uh, patterns and they wanted to find something in the website and like, yeah, it's, it's hard to, to, to see if, if it's actually like there. Uh, and, uh, it's, I, I know the struggle for, 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 from yeah. that perspective. And yeah. actually myself, I, I learned to be a software developer, but I'm not good in that. Like, <laughs> I always try to say that because when, when I say I'm, oh, I'm a software developer, people assume I have a lot of knowledge about yeah. the software also around Bitcoin, but I'm not that good in the, the tech and the scaling of, of Bitcoin, which brings yeah. me to kind of, kind of to my first topic, uh, when we jump directly in. How do you envision that we uh, scale Bitcoin? Obviously, Albi, Lightning, there are so many applications around that. But on a on a on a bigger scale, how, how do you see Bitcoin scaling uh, on on more layers? Um, yeah, I guess the most obvious thing is currently Lightning, which is still which still has a very long way to go. I guess um, with Albi Hub and Albi Go, we're trying to move the needle, uh, the needle a bit, uh, towards, um, ease of use. So we try to make it easier for also people who don't have extensive knowledge in, in Bitcoin 
to start their node, um, to get some liquidity with their node. But yeah, um, it's like I said, there's a, a long way to go. On top of that, I guess there are a lot of developments around Fediment, eCash and these kind of things. Yeah, I guess it's <clears throat> it's split between these. these. Um, also, there are obviously some, some other um, proposals which would need uh, Bitcoin soft forks at least. Um, but I guess um, they are still a few years out before we can actually yeah, think about even using them. Um, so I guess we have to work with what we have right now. And I think there is also um, a lot of room for improvement, for making it more efficient. And yeah, I guess that will, will be fine during the next five uh, years, I guess. Is it, do you feel like it's uh, an, a development that could go or should go faster or is it already like, the, is the pace kind of kind of good that, that, that we have? I mean, from a user perspective, you would always say, yeah, I want it. I want everything now, right? Um, but Bitcoin um, derives its strength also from <laughs> not being changed easily, right? So um, I guess it's it's obvious that at least this layer moves very slow. And on top of that, I see quite some developments. If you just look at, at Cashew or Fedimin, I mean, these projects, I don't even know, did they exist a, a year ago? And they still, uh, they already seem to have some traction, um, but also self-custodial lightning is, um, yeah, has a lot of room to grow basically, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's super interesting for me when we, when we look at all those interesting, uh, developments that we have in Bitcoin and there's so many different applications coming out, different, uh, um, wallets and, and things, use cases that we can use actually, uh, coming out. So it's quite nice. But the, the thing that I always see, and I saw that development with Nostra actually, where like one year ago, uh, I locked in and I was like kind of dissatisfied with everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, like that, that, there's a long way to go for, for people that had, don't have a strong incentive to, to join here. Uh, like yeah. it's, it's far away from like, uh, I don't know, a Twitter or YouTube onboarding. Uh, and now, uh, and that's why I did not go, anything big on on also like a year ago uh and that's why i also <laughs> lo lo lost my private keys on nostra uh <laughs> with my old account that's why i had to make a whole new one like a month or one and a half months ago okay. uh and now the thing is already so much better like it, it improved like three four x uh yeah. for me it, it was abnormal how how good <laughs> it got and yeah. i hope that just continues with every application with every uh thing we're doing in bitcoin and that's why i always like to talk with with people yeah. that actually build something i think it's super cool that <clears throat> now with these developments we we can just try out different things right and the market will tell us what what is working what users want basically um, and I think that's super exciting, whether that's a future where most things are done self custodial with lightning or with eCash or I don't know, some other future technology. I mean, we cannot know now, but, um, we are striving to improve it, uh, basically every day. Yeah. And, and I hope it's self custodial. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope that people are not too lazy and just like put everything on a, on a Bitcoin bank. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, it's a very controversial topic, um, but it, I think it also depends a lot on, on your situation. Um, like, will you, uh, honestly, will you start off um, directly self custodial? I think for most people, that's just not realistic. So I see it as kind of a path, um, where you start off with something and as you, reach certain amounts or uh, gain more knowledge, want to go self-custodial maybe, um, then, then, you, then you have options, right? And that's the key part, I think. Did you start uh, with, with self-custodial or like how, how, how did you acquire your first Bitcoins and how <laughs> long did it take question. to get on self-custody? Um, 
I mean, I did some very early experiments. I remember setting up a, a CASA node, I think, which was years back, but <laughs> I think I had a similar experience like you had with Nostra. It was just a huge struggle a few years back. And now that I see all of these options, um, yeah, uh, I think there is a, a bright future ahead um, if you kind of extrapolate this development during the last years or five more years. I think it will be a lot, lot easier um, to, to run these things. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's uh, that, that that's crazy. Yeah. Um, how satisfied are you with the overall user experience with the ux of of <laughs> of bitcoin right now as you said like it was really bad like uh, uh maybe like five ten years back and and uh it it, it feels like it's get better but yeah. it also depends on where you look <laughs> yeah i mean we also have quite some insights because um yeah we we offer basically live chat support. So users can easily reach us and reach out to us if, if they have questions. And that's also a really nice feedback channel, I, I feel like, because <clears throat> sometimes you're also just assuming too many things. So if you work in, in some topic, a topic for, for years, uh, you kind of get some blind spots. And then suddenly people, for instance, uh, come in um, they want to buy an inbound uh, channel and they wonder why can't they pay with their crypto.com uh, wallet, for instance, which only supports on chain, right? And yeah, <clears throat> there, yeah, there are a lot of UX hurdles, I feel like, and um, a lot of things to be improved, um, but also there are ways to do so. So for instance, <clears throat> for this one, um, you could try look at BIP21, uh, which kind of tries to unify Bitcoin payments between Bitcoin and Lightning. Um, so you just have one QR code and the user um, doesn't necessarily need to know uh, <clears throat> with uh, whether they are paying with, with on-chain or Lightning. I think a lot of these things might be abstracted away, hopefully, uh, in the future. So users don't need to exactly know what's going on under the hood. Currently, I feel like it's still a bit hard to hide these things um, completely because if something goes wrong, um, yeah, it's super helpful for the user to at least have some understanding of, of how these things work beneath the surface and that they need channels and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what is bit 21? Uh, BIP, uh, it's a Bitcoin, oh, BIP, not BIT. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, Bitcoin improvement proposal 21. Um, it's unified QR codes for Bitcoin payments, for instance. Oh, I understood BIT 21. I was like, yeah, is there like sorry. an app out there yeah. that does that? But <laughs> no, yeah, no, of no. course, the BIP uh, 21, yeah, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Ma and... Maybe for, uh, uh, so sorry, go ahead. I yeah, just wanted to say, uh, and like that, I guess there are a lot of other um, improvements that could be made uh, also around channel management, automating things. So I feel like this in uh, this channel management is uh, what people struggle a lot with um, and they don't really care about it because it's also an unknown concept maybe. So there are also some ideas <clears throat> to automate certain things where you would uh, maybe just define some thresholds and then some swaps could happen. So you always have inbound liquidity or stuff like that. I think that's super interesting to think about these things as in combination maybe with, with liquid. Um, there are a lot of interesting ideas to, to explore, yeah. I love it. I love it. Really cool. Um, uh, I always want to be aware of maybe new people or not tech people are in there. What is a BIP, the Bitcoin improvement, uh, what, what you already said, uh, and and, uh, and what, what is a specific BIP, like a uh, BIP21? Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, BIP21 tries to define how wallets um, can advertise payments to their users. So let's say you go on a website and you want to pay for a product. What you usually uh, end up seeing is a QR code. And oftentimes if they provide or offer lightning, 
um, you would be able to switch between the two. But that also means um, the user needs to know which one to choose. And if you're a new user, um, yeah, most most don't exactly understand what the difference is exactly. And by combining these two options into basically one QR code and just advertising both, um, the sending wallet can then uh, decide on which to use. Um, they could also add certain, let's say, thresholds or based on the fee environment to automatically pick the cheaper option, for instance, and stuff like that. Um, that's basically tw Big 21 in a nutshell, I would say. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's really cool uh, to 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 see that uh, Bitcoin is developed and is is, is coming uh, along, especially all the things around Bitcoin, like BIP is for for that, but uh, for for the ecosystem on layer two, for layer three, and other stuff like that. It's really important that we uh, develop those things. Uh, and now to the <laughs> Maybe a question I should have started with, but uh, what is Albi and what are you doing at Albi? So, yeah, at Albi, um, we try to to work on the future uh, of Lightning, uh, of Bitcoin payments and making them accessible for everyday uh, people, basically. Um, we've started off several years ago with the browser extension. Uh, which is probably still the most downloaded or well-known product uh, we offer. And the browser extension um, allows you to do two things. It's, it's first of all, it's a lightning wallet. You can connect it to um, your own node. And second, um, it's your Nostra key store. So it allows you to securely use web apps, Nostra web apps, um, and sign those events for you. Yeah, I would say that's the, the two things. And during the last, um, let's say, several months, um, we have uh, developed uh, two or released two, two new products, which is Albi Hub and Albi Go. Um, they, they kind of work very well together. Um, so Albi Hub is your self-custodial uh, lightning wallet that runs everywhere. You can run it on your Raspberry Pi, on your Start9, on your Umbrel. Um, you also offer hosted options um, in case you don't have uh, or want to run a device at home. Um, and with Albigo, you can uh, perfectly use this thing uh, while you're on the go. Um, so it's a mobile app allowing you to connect and use your Lightning Node, node while you're uh, on the go. And pay for products, um, I don't know, at conferences, wherever you are, uh, if you're able to buy Bitcoin, uh, able to buy coffee uh, for Bitcoin at your place, you're probably lucky. Um, yeah, but that's the overall idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it, it's uh, I have a local Bitcoin meetup in Vienna every month, and there they accept Bitcoin. And the restaurant owner is actually like a real Bitcoiner, and he's Correct. involved in the community. He wants also to do Bitcoin videos. Like he really wants to position also his restaurant as a Bitcoin restaurant. Nice. So uh, yeah. that's amazing to have that uh, because obviously he accepts Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, it's it's quite amazing that uh, like a year ago. I didn't spend any Bitcoin and now I spend it monthly and also get paid in Bitcoin, uh, yeah. most of my uh, income actually. So like the, the ecosystem uh, for me is really developing now uh, as I use it also so much. And uh, that that's a, that's a great experience. And I think we, we've come all, a, a long way, but we have a very long way to go. <laughs> exactly. And that's how I see it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. Then uh, what is uh, the... What do, you, what do you see as the biggest challenge, like the, the long way to, to go still? Like what, what, what is like the, the, the big challenges that we, we might face in the Bitcoin development future? Yeah, that's a, a broad topic, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, scaling. Scaling is one point. If, if all of the uh, yeah, people <laughs> would discover Bitcoin uh, at once, uh, we would certainly have a problem. Um, so there needs to be something, I guess, some years out um, if we don't want to uh, go to custody for most of users. So Other we would than have, that, yeah. 
So I think we would have a lot of problems if that's what I always say. Like, I don't want Bitcoin to grow too fast yeah. because first of all, that, which means that would mean the fiat system completely wrecks and, yeah. and, <laughs> and all your neighbors, all your family, all your loved ones are in big trouble. So it's like, yeah. uh, uh, actually something that you don't wish for the world that yeah. Bitcoin, I don't know, goes next year to, to $10 million because yeah. this means the fiat system is really screwed. Yeah. Uh, and the second part is like, is Bitcoin ready for, for, for yeah. like 4 billion people? <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So I think it just takes longer than most people think. Like <clears throat> also like we Bitcoiners, we often tend to, to say or, or think that the people just don't understand it while they would need it. Right. Um, we see a kind of their money um, depreciating in value and want to help them get the, get them onboarded. But I think um, it's if you if you have a look at Argentina or other places where they had like really bad inflation and how people still manage to kind of get along um, and then zoom back to Europe or the US wherever um, where. Inflation is kind of okay, and most people, yeah, they notice it, but it's not not that worse. Um, I think it takes a long time um, for people to really understand where where these things are coming from, and then also have the mental flexibility to kind of get on this new standard and and try to learn, be open about it, uh, because I feel. A lot of people just immediately go into kind of a defensive. I think the net. I think we often underestimate the network effect of fiat. I think mm -hmm. like 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 fiat has a very strong network effect because you see it everywhere with the unit of account. Everyone has a, a fiat. Like not everyone has a fiat wallet because there are a lot of unbanked people. But like especially in the Western countries, uh, they all mm -hmm. have like fiat wallets or like bank accounts. Uh, and this, this network effect and this deep ingrained, uh, like dollars, euros, whatever your currency, that's your, that's your money. People think that's, that's a money. Uh, I think that, that it takes a long time to get, to get over that. And even Bitcoiners, uh, even myself, I use euro as a unit of account. Like, yeah. uh, I set my prices for my partnerships, uh, in euros. Uh, I think in euros, I, yeah. when I do bookkeeping for my company, I have to do euros. So like my, my brain is still in euros, uh, even though my treasury, uh, like I'm 100% in Bitcoin. So that helps, but, but we have a long way to go and, and it's not, yeah. it's not a quick, like it also took me uh, three years to get over Bitcoin is a scam. And then mm -hmm. one year from, okay, Bitcoin might be something to I'm all in Bitcoin. So yeah. like from zero to 100 in four years, and I think that's kind of an, a realistic uh, timeline for people to like, okay, the first time they actually acknowledge and like think about yeah. Bitcoin to like till the actually are on a Bitcoin standard. Uh, but I love that already those developments are coming in those directions. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the most important is, uh, thing I think is um, that, that they have some curiosity. Otherwise, you, you will have a very hard time um, convincing anybody, right? It's, it, it... What, what, what do you think is the, the, the main driver for, I asked that, uh, recently on my YouTube community, uh, what, what is the main driver that, that you, that got you into Bitcoin? There's like, like this, uh, I want to store my wealth. I want to increase my wealth. Uh, I want to be more freedom. I, I want to have more freedom. And then there are other reasons, smaller reasons for that. Yeah. Like, what do you think is the, the main reason, uh, people come in and was this also then your reason um i guess it's fiat gains <laughs> for the most part um as well as for all people as it was initially for me i think um, because you just look at something that goes up in value constantly <laughs> and that that might lead you to read a book or two if you're really interested uh in that and yeah, then, then you discover other parts, uh, 
like you said, freedom or privacy or censorship resistance or yeah, I guess it depends a lot on on what your current situation is. It might be completely different in you if you live in like some country in some I don't know with some totalitarian regime. Or, I think <laughs> most people are interested in in fiat gains initially. That's also why those shit coins work, I guess. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so so much. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis I guess you already bought some Bitcoin and now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss Robin to get your Bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. It's, uh, I, I always love to, to uh, show this website when we talk about fiat gains or price because it's like everything is red. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> so, so switch your brain to Bitcoin. And yeah. now we actually had a, a period of like, actually everything is red uh and and it's like you you can hardly see some small green things yeah. in there and it's really hard to 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 pick them out and it's it's with everything uh like with precious metals with commodities with equity markets with bond yeah. markets with houses yeah, you especially. just have to wait long enough then everything will be red forever <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah really great uh but yeah but coming back to the to, to the to the question from the, that we previously yeah. discussed of like the challenges that you see with with scaling mm -hmm. um so like that that's that's for you like right now obviously what in scaling do you think is 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 the hard part like obviously right now we have so not a lot of people in in bitcoin actually using it and mm -hmm. the most people that are in bitcoin right now they they just hold it on exchanges they hold it on a an, on a hardware wallet they hold yeah. it on some self custody solution um and the people that actually transact with it and actually do something using bitcoin is is very small what happens if that number of people actually like increases a lot like all of the yeah. sudden like i don't know half a billion people uh, want to transact in in bitcoin on, on a regular basis yeah i mean if you say half a billion, that's that's really a lot. Um, I guess the um, yeah the block space uh, is too limited to to onboard half a billion people in a self custodial way, uh, at least right now. Um, that's just a fact. I think um, if you don't want to to wait for years, at least, um, yeah. Um, so like you said. Um, I guess there are a lot of options. Obviously, um, you can debate around whether scaling Bitcoin uh, with custodial things still is Bitcoin, um, because 
obviously there is the argument that if you use Bitcoin in a custodial way, it loses almost all of its property <laughs> uh, properties that, that makes it unique. But I guess if, if tomorrow uh, a half a billion people would, would like to join the Lightning Network, um, I guess uh, that's currently the only way to do it open custodial services um, and that's also i guess one of the biggest challenges um, or dangers maybe um, for lightning in general that we we should strive to um, it's okay if some people use custodial services i'm i'm fine with that everybody should do what they want but we we should um, still try to to make it uh, yeah, kind of one big system and not tear them apart in, in like some, you know, some custodial KYC kind of Bitcoin and, and then it's the, the self-custodial Bitcoin. Um, I guess that that would be very bad, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting when we think about the tearing apart. Uh, I remember, I don't even know his name. There was someone on a Bitcoin conference who said, uh, ESG Bitcoin will be worth more than other Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? I, I, I've read it as well, but I, I cannot remember. Oh, that. Kevin O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary was it. Yeah. And I think, I, I think that's, that, that's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that will not happen at all. Like, like if you, you, you can even, you can not, not even prove at some point where, like where a Bitcoin 100% comes from, uh, like, like there yeah. is, uh, uh, that's on so, but that was just on my <laughs> head right now when you said mm. tearing apart. So hopefully we come to the, that, um, point where everything is, uh, kind of one system. I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's always like this protocol. Uh, and even if there are custodial solutions, you can always like, switch to self custodial solution so at, at least we have to agree on on one protocol yeah. and then we can interact with different apps and like i can use a different app you can use a different app and we can interact with that and don't that's the true build. power right uh, that that it doesn't matter where this thing actually runs yeah you can just transact peer to peer if you want to yeah yeah, that's that, that's very true. What are yeah. what are your thoughts on um, uh, on Nostra actually? Oh man, uh, I just went uh, off X, uh, I guess two weeks ago, so I paused or I don't know disabled my account uh, there because I wanted to throw myself a, a little bit more. I was always lurking around there and you know reading stuff, and I wanted to dive in a bit deeper. Um, and so, yeah, I love it. Um, I really have to say, um, also compared to a year ago, um, a lot of things have changed. There is a lot of interesting content on there. For me, it's mostly Bitcoin or Bitcoin development related things. Um, so a lot of Nostal devs, um, I don't know, Bitcoin devs, um, posting interesting stuff. Um, but also some personal connections. Um, so I just onboarded my, my wife uh, a week ago and threw her uh, into, into this new thing. Um, and yeah, we're just discovering it uh, together, I guess. So you are only on Nostra right now with social media? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a, a brave step. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there. There have been people before me who, who did that, right? Also with quite some followings. Um, and it's also, I mean, it depends, right? I, I don't um, depend on any income or reach or, or whatnot on, on Twitter. So that might uh, not work for everyone. But if you have the option to do so, I think, you know, uh, you, you have, what is the saying? Um, do what you want to see in the world, kind of. And yeah, if you put your energy into this open, um, decentralized network, it, it's kind of, you kind of support um, with every post and you, you support this ecosystem with every SAP with, uh, yeah, that's. But, but also as a consumer, you're not on YouTube, not on other, any other social media platform just to, to consume? No, uh, currently, currently not. Sometimes I watch some, 
YouTube videos, obviously, but I don't use it as a social media or something. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I, 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 I watch too much YouTube, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you end up in the, in the short, uh, reels or <laughs> well, well, oh, no, no, I, up... <laughs> I watch actual like, uh, videos, uh, like Adash, like I, I usually, I really try to avoid those doom scrolling things, like yeah. where you just like scroll yeah. on Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, TikTok, yeah. Twitter also has it now. Like yeah. I, they don't have, right? they don't That's have a the, name for it. The incentive of these apps to maximize uh, the time you spend there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, I don't like it. And, yeah. uh, I hope. I hope YouTube stays like that, where you can really like separate those two things. But mm -hmm. I see more and more <laughs> coming together yeah, things. Yeah. I even get the the YouTube shorts now on the TV as a suggestion. I'm like, yeah. who wants to watch the YouTube shorts on on a TV? <laughs> like that's that, that seems ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I I also don't like them. Yeah, your brain feels like <laughs> smashed after after you after you watch them for like. 15 minutes, uh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make me feel but good. I, yeah. But I actually really enjoy YouTube as an education platform. Yeah. Uh, on the one side, like you have the one, two, three, four, five hour podcast, and I just like to have the visual also. Yeah. I mean, Spotify also has it now uh, with the visual, but I still, from the UX, prefer uh, YouTube. Uh, but also, I enjoy just like 15, 20 minutes videos where you dive deep into some topic <laughs> like yeah. oh like i i didn't knew anything about it yeah. now i know a little bit about it so i i really do like it and i would love to see a nostra app just like copying youtube just like straight out like the yeah. interface just like call it nos tube i don't know how you call it but... I, I think it's called flare pop um so flare app, pop uh, yeah flare dot pop um I don't know how much development uh, is going on right now, but I think that was the, the overall idea. So, sorry, uh, I was muted. Uh, I will just open it here so people sure. can see it also. Let me do that. So so that's that's Flare Pub. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's basically like what you said. Um, it's basically a YouTube Nostal client. Yeah. I, I don't know about the quality of the content, to be honest, but the interface more or less, more or less looks looks familiar, right? It looks very familiar, yeah. A, a, a little weird is that there's everywhere zero views. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not that easy to count views, but maybe I, yeah, it could also be just some random posts by bots or I don't know, looks a looks a bit strange yeah but I, I love that those options are there and and people are working on them yeah. and uh, it's 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 not so important that it's like right now here and it's we are taking over the world right now but it, it's just like we have to move in that direction and it also gives a pressure on all the other platforms because if there's a really nice youtube application on nostra which People are liking to upload, people are liking to watch, and there's like a solid uh, user base on there, even if it's way smaller than on YouTube. This puts YouTube uh, in a very tough spot where when they try to censor something or do some some other things, uh, people get pissed off because because all of a the sudden their favorite creator is no longer there. The, the account get deleted. People notice that, especially if they watch someone on a regular or even daily basis. All of a sudden, this guy is not there anymore. Where did he go? Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the new platforms, they don't do that. So this this puts kind of pressure on YouTube, but also on X and all the Facebook platforms to like, okay, there is an alternative. Without an alternative, they can just do whatever they want. And with an alternative, that's my hope. They get a little pressure at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, that's definitely something to hope for. Um, but I guess... A lot of people don't care about that until um, they are affected, right? I, I guess you have to once uh, live through uh, a platform uh, deplatforming you 
uh, to even understand why you would uh, care about such things, maybe. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's 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 a it's a broad topic, the the deep platforming, because YouTube uh, already kicked out a lot of Bitcoiners, but the, mm. for almost all of them, especially the bigger ones, all came back. Like it was like, oh, like it's a softer thing. Like a few yeah, weeks yeah. or a few days uh, mm. back, uh, like it was with. Simply Bitcoin, the, the, the same story. Uh, I think they came back after a week or something like that. And, and I talked with some bigger YouTuber in, in German space, the Roman Ray here. And yeah, he yeah. basically told me his account is now almost 200K on, on, on YouTube, like really big. He's the biggest one in the German market. And he basically t told me, um, yeah, my account got taken down two times already. <laughs> Uh, and he talks with YouTube around that and it's just like bots, like in the first decisions, there's no human interactions. At least yeah. that's what YouTube is saying. So it's also interesting then how would a platform that big work on Nostra? Like how would yeah. that work? Uh, how can you choose your own algorithms? How do you envision, how do you see it? Uh, how, how do you prevent spams and bots and 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 try to have a clean platform um and uh not have uh <laughs> this, this the same uh thing that you have in yeah. the in the basically on, on the de on the centralized platforms yeah i mean it's definitely messier on nostra right but, but that's the thing um with decentralization yeah i guess um there is yeah, it's just a different way of, of running such. It's not a platform, right? It's a different way of running your social media, I guess. Do you think there is a fair chance that Nostra or a similar protocol, like if, let's just like say a decentralized social media protocol once will be the main thing and you can always go from one client to another client and you, you have this NOSA future or is that something uh, that, that will not happen? If it will not happen, it would be interesting to know like what, what might be the limitations. I guess it depends <clears throat> on a long enough tile, time scale. Uh, I would think that's definitely something that can happen right now. Uh, I think the network effects also of the, like you, you touched before on the network effects of fiat, right? I think it's very similar, uh, here. Um, now we have like very big network effects on YouTube, on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. So it makes it very hard for people to do the switch, right? But the cool thing with Nostra, I guess, is you can just see it as an additional uh, thing that you maintain maybe maybe you do not put in the same amount of work like you do in in other um, but in my experience the the conversations on Nostar are like a lot more valuable um let's say it's <clears throat> it's like yeah it, it's i had some super nice conversations everyone was super helpful um overall the spirit is very positive i would say um, i enjoy that currently yeah yeah uh, i also have this experience and we talked in the beginning um uh how uh, how much revenue of, of mine is coming from mm -hmm. the value for value. And there's one thing I forgot about that because currently value for value is actually only possible. So really on, on fountain. Okay. And like my YouTube audience, if my YouTube audience is that big, my podcast audience is like maybe that. Okay. And from that, the fountain is only the third or the fourth biggest platform. <laughs> like it's, okay. it's that, that yeah, small. Yeah. So maybe uh, I should look at like uh, per listener, per, per audience member, the revenue states, uh, that w uh, statistics, that, that would be maybe an interesting one that just came to my mind. Because when you look at like how much per, I don't know, minute by someone watched you actually uh, earn uh versus from from the traditional thing uh th then you can way better see where where it's going i just wanted to to add that from our conversation previously. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting thought if you if you have these numbers available i would be very interested uh 
to to see uh, that. Also, like for me, this value for value thing, I think it's super cool, but it puts this mental cost on myself to choose how much I want to support someone. So within certain Albi products, you will see a lot of like presets where you can just donate a uh, a thousand, five thousand, or ten thousand, just to make it a little bit easier. As stupid that, as that might sound, but also for Fountain, do you choose to stream ten sats per minute, a hundred, a thousand, even more? Um, it's it's not that easy to do these calculations, at least for me. So it would be super interesting for me to um, have a number how much you actually uh, would need to uh, stream with Fountain to equal uh, your earnings in like YouTube or something on a per listener basis. I think that's... <laughs> that would be super be interesting. Yeah. I, I, if it's easy, I will, I will do it, but I'll probably have to extract some data. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And so many different, but I, I will try it. Like I, I will Maybe try you can it. Just try it for YouTube. If it's the most easy thing to calculate some per listener uh, revenue or something um, per minute. Because the um, it's it's basically ad revenue versus value for value because the sponsors are anyways there. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no matter if it's uh, on on a on a fountain app or yeah. uh, YouTube, because the yeah. The, podcasts of the, the the ads are always there uh but yeah it's the ad revenue of youtube and it's also it's interesting <laughs> uh, always when a, a a video of mine really blows up and gets like over twenty thousand or maybe over thirty thousand uh, views on youtube uh then only i get complaints about the uh, too many ads on, on youtube uh because oh, okay. i let youtube choose how many ads they do like i i just go with the default setting of like youtube you do it because mm -hmm. otherwise i have uh, extra work um and that's probably how they want it to be uh and then i just like choose it and i think the more successful a video gets i think they also put more in there yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I, have, I have that weird notion because uh nobody ever complained about a lower performing video that there are too many ads and almost almost every time a video really goes good someone is like oh there's so many ads in there i'm like ah that's youtube sorry <laughs> <laughs> speaking about incentives right yeah <laughs> that, that's true yeah. <laughs> yeah it's also i don't know may, may, maybe youtube pushes then the video more because they can uh, get, make more revenue with that one video right, right? absolutely about uh, maybe the last uh, topic, uh, because we are uh, streaming towards the one hour already. Um, last topic for today. How is how do you see? I don't know how much insight you have in the topic, but how how do you see the funding of Bitcoin development, Lightning development? Um, <laughs> is that something where like okay, um, that, that's concerning, or like uh, it's 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 fine? Like how do you see? uh funding in total uh, in a wall mm, yeah i mean there there are different um things going on i would say obviously there is the traditional venture capital space uh, which you will read about quite often um that someone uh did an, a new round and, and stuff so there is that that's yeah i guess a good thing um the market uh, will decide um what products uh people are willing to pay for and and which they are not um but also there are very cool initiatives by uh open sets for instance so also i guess a lot of nostal development um is funded uh, by them um, and they collect uh, funds from, I guess they have some companies um, backing them, but also individuals. Um, and they try to, <clears throat> they have a board and try to redistribute this, these funds to different um, Nostra and Bitcoin projects. Um, very much, I guess, focusing around uh, self-custody, privacy, uh, and, and other things um, that yeah, might or might not be that well funded uh, with with VCs. So I guess they they 
uh, kind of do a good job in um, also funding like more groundwork, let's say, you know, like building out some very basic things that you cannot immediately yeah, see where you would get revenue from. So I guess um, that's that's a cool thing. And then there are also other organizations like uh, the HRF, which are also funding different projects. I would say, yeah, um, it's it's quite good. I feel like um, there are different sources. And if you're really passionate uh, about something uh, and want to bring something forward, um, I guess you will find someone to, to convince uh, about your product. Yeah. I also have seen, uh, honestly, a very generous uh, Bitcoin community. Like they, they, they really want to see Bitcoin succeed uh, and they are willing to pay for that cause. Uh, I mean, I have not raised money at all, uh, but I heard a lot of stories and uh, through those stories, I saw how generous uh, Bitcoiners are and how willing they are like, hey, I would, I, 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 I will take part of my Bitcoin and I will um, um, support Bitcoin with that. And that's, that's really good to see. Uh, I think that's something that is very positive and a very bullish sign also that uh, big Bitcoiners are willing uh, to do that and are not like, ah, it's my Bitcoin, someone else should pay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent. I can only agree. Yeah, um, it's kind of yeah. It's if you put yourself into the shoes of a VC. Yeah, um, if you buy Bitcoin and just hold on to them for quite some time, I guess you could make the case that it's very hard to outperform Bitcoin um, as a startup, probably. But that being said, um, I I also feel like um, a lot of people kind of want to get uh, give back um, want to see their idea or bitcoin succeed and are also willing to contribute back which is which also makes me super bullish uh, because these people also have their incentives aligned uh, they use bitcoin they fund projects that they would want to see in the world so that's super cool to see yeah Absolutely. Really cool. Perfect. We have um, one question that I always ask my, my guests before we have the end routine. What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? Besides Bitcoin, um, maybe how to, to hold chicken. <laughs> so I'm a new, um, I just uh, started a little, you know, very little farm with some chicken and stuff. And I'm... <laughs> I'm enjoying this stuff a lot. Um, I have now a lot of eggs. Um, it's very different to Bitcoin, um, but it's also super, yeah, a, a super uh, good way to distract your mind a bit from Bitcoin if you're thinking about that all the time. I love it. Uh, uh, chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Then we come to our end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and the question is, what is the main takeaway from Bitcoin you want everyone to know? I guess it's uh, freedom money. That's that's my uh, kind of overall perspective on it. Um, yeah, and and why I uh, also contribute my time towards Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh yeah, what, what did you do before? Did you do uh, on uh, normal software development or? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, I was a software development uh, developer, project manager uh, back in my Fiat days. Um, yeah, and at one time I said, okay, let's let's take a year off and kind of uh, try to to find something that uh, I have passion uh, for. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> in that year, you you were already in Bitcoin, or you no. got Bitcoin yeah. in that year? Uh, I I mean, I I read a lot about Bitcoin, but I never actually uh, you know developed something around it. And during that year, I visited several hackathons um, in different places, got to know many people in the Lightning and Bitcoin space, and that was kind of my my entry door into into all of these things yeah really cool thank you so yeah. much uh for for joining us today Thanks um, for having me. 
Thank, thank, uh, and yeah, for, before I let you go, um, wh where can people find you? I guess on Nostra. <laughs> yeah, it's it's on uh, Nostra. You can search for uh, Rene Aaron at get I become. That's my Nippo 5. I will spare you spelling out my end pop, um, but I guess you can find me <laughs> there. Absolutely. Do, do, do you, but you don't know it by heart, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That, that that would be something that would be really impressive yeah <laughs> i know my end pop by heart because i have to tell people so many times yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like your phone number right <laughs> but it's way harder than the phone number <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> yeah perfect and yeah thank you so much uh aaron okay. for being on uh, also thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for joining us today as always i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye 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 bye